Critical engine. What is this? Does a Boeing 737 or any other twin jet engine has a critical engine? Stay tuned and find out. Hello folks, welcome back to the Aircraft Performance Channel. My name is Thiago Brenner and on this video we're going to talk about critical engine. I'll give you a hint on the question I asked on the beginning of this video. Yes, the 737 may have in some cases a critical engine. I'll explain everything about that, but you'll have to stay until the end. First of all, what is a critical engine? To start our discussion, we'll talk about propeller-driven engines first. It might be a turboprop, it might be a piston engine, it has no difference in what we are going to talk about here. I am bringing you here a Piper Seneca as a model of our study. You can see that this engine is sitting on the airplane, not exactly on the longitudinal axis, but it is tilting a little bit upwards. And this is a very big deal. Let's have a closer look on the propeller right now. Imagine on this schematic here that the downgoing blade of this propeller is being projected out of the screen and the upcoming propeller is being projected into the screen. Well, you have to imagine a blade as a wing with an aerodynamic format and an angle of attack. Both wings or both blades here now have the exact same angle of attack, therefore they are producing the exact same lift or as we are talking about propellers and not wings we change the name from lift to thrust okay both blades are uh, producing the exact same amount of thrust but if we tilt the airplane a little bit upward we are now having a different amount of angle of attack for both blades the downgoing blade has a greater angle of attack than the upcoming one Therefore, is producing a higher amount of thrust. So, thrust is distributed in an asymmetrical way along the propeller disc. And this is a big issue that must be addressed. Bringing back two Piper Senecas to the screen, we'll see that the left-hand one has two engines rotating clockwise. The right-hand one has two counter-rotating engines. And what is the performance difference between both? To answer this question, let's begin with a top view of both aircrafts. I will draw here the thrust vector of the upcoming blade and the downgoing blade. The downgoing blade being the greater thrust vector. You can see that on the right hand airplane, there is no asymmetry along the longitudinal axis of this airplane. And if I lose the right hand engine, there will be a yaw to the right. But if I compare to what is happening losing the left-hand engine, the yaw to the left and the yaw to the right is about the same intensity. Now let's look at the left-hand airplane, the one with both engines rotating clockwise. To the longitudinal axis of this airplane, there is already an asymmetry. That means that even with both engines working, I have a bit of a yaw to the left, and I have to use my right rudder to make this airplane fly straight. Now, if I lose the right-hand engine, the amount of yaw to the right is about the same with the previous situation. But if I lose my left-hand engine right now, the yaw to the left that had already existed, even with both engines working, is now much more pronunciated. So it is worse to lose the left-hand engine than it is to lose the right-hand engine. I have two different situations here, and the engine that when fails will leave you with the worst situation is known as the critical engine. In that case, the critical engine of the left airplane is the left one, and the right airplane has no critical engine, because losing the left or the right engine will leave you at the same situation. Let me stress once again what critical engine is. Is the engine that, if failed, will leave you at the worst case scenario in terms of performance. And this is very important to understand what is the critical engine of a 737. But before answering that question, let me remind you that everything that you are seeing here on this channel 
is available to you on the Aircraft Performance Weight and Balance book. It is available to purchase worldwide, either in digital format or on paperback format. The digital format, by the way, is 50% off. Check the link on the description below. Moving on. Let's imagine our Boeing 737 here with two engines producing up to 26,000 pounds of thrust each. To make things more interesting, I'll bring two 737s here on the screen. And I will draw the thrust vectors of each engine. Everything is the same. But note that I have written just underneath each engine the expression bleed on. That is because the air that is being sucked by the engine to be pushed backwards to produce a forward thrust, it is not all being pushed backwards. Part of the air that is being ingested by the engine is used to feed other systems in this aircraft, such as air conditioning, for example. On most jet aircrafts, it works like this, with the exception of the 787. But let's leave the exception aside and focus on this model, the 737. Well, if the air that is going through the engine is being sucked by a bleed valve and used in other functions than to produce thrust, that means that the thrust of this engine is not the maximum amount of thrust while the bleed valve is open. But you have the option to shut off this bleed valve and now all the air that is going through the engine is actually being used to produce thrust. But there are some situations on a Boeing 737, such as when you are being dispatched with one engine bleed or one pack inoperative, that you have the option to depart with one engine bleed on and one engine bleed off, therefore producing different amount of thrust. And I show this situation on this picture here, with two different N1 rotations to the airplane in the moment of takeoff. In this scenario, I have two engines producing two different amount of thrust, the left one being the weakest and the right one being the strongest engine. And now the question, which one is the critical engine, the strongest or the weakest one? Now I love the answer for that. It is, it depends. It depends on what? It depends on what is being evaluated. If we're talking about controllability, the weakest engine being failed will leave you with the strongest engine that will produce the biggest amount of yaw that will require more speed or more amount of rudder to be controlled. So the weakest engine is the critical engine for controllability purpose. If we are analyzing climb capability, however, the strongest engine if failed, will leave you with the weakest engine, and the weakest engine will make you climb with less rate of climb or with a shorter gradient of climb. That means the strongest engine is the critical engine for climb analysis purpose. You see, there is no one right answer. For the same situation, depending on what's been analyzed, you have the critical engine the weakest one or the strongest one. And what is the critical engine on a trijet such as the Boeing 727? Well, this airplane is very interesting. Talking about controllability, there is no difference between losing engine number one and losing engine number three. The amount of yaw that you're going to have is about the same. But talking about climb capability, the critical engine is engine number two, the tail mounted engine. And why is that? That's because this is always the strongest engine of this airplane, because the system of this airplane is projected in a way that this engine, the engine number two, has no bleed air valve. That means that it is always producing more thrust than the other two. And finally, what about the four-engine airplane, such as the Boeing 747 or the Airbus A380? Well, if you lose any inboard engine, you'll have a certain amount of yaw that will be fought with the rudder pedal. And this yaw will be kind of small due to the small arm between the longitudinal axis and the position of the engine. On the other hand, if you lose an outboard engine, either number one or number four, this yaw will be much greater due to the bigger arm and you will need much more rudder to fight this yaw. So, 
the critical engine of any four engine airplane will be always the outboard engine, either number one or number four. Well, folks, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Remember that this is only the third video in English of this channel and there is so much more to come. Please give me your feedback on the comment section below. Also, take this moment to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, and activate the notification bell. Consider sharing this channel with your colleagues, follow me on my social media, and I see you next time.